Hello friends, this is Frank Fagnone. I'm President and CEO of Old Salem Museums and Gardens and the Museum of Early Southern Decorative Arts. I'd like to talk a little bit about our analysis and data collection to help us figure out what our new operating model will be during the COVID pandemic. The first thing I'd like to do is introduce you to our leadership team. It consists of 20 people and the important thing about what I am going to talk about today is that this is an extremely collaborative effort. So this isn't coming from just one small group of people. In fact, these 20 people represent all of the division, mission-centric activities at Old Salem and Mesda. So when we come to conclusions, uh, I hope you appreciate that it's not just one person coming to that conclusion, that in fact it's, it's this collaborative body. So our operational projections have come out of several phases of analysis. Um, the first phase is one where we started to look at five categories of um, important subjects. The first one, unique issues pertaining to each division, um, how those things were prioritized, what sort of effect that would have on schedules and timelines, what's the safety requirements because of taking COVID precautions, and then finally the fifth one of those categories is how will all those previous four categories affect the financial factors. Now, something to really take note of is that we have always put the safety of our staff and our visitors ahead of the financial factors. We started at the very beginning with that and we will continue through the pandemic. So now, as I mentioned, that leadership team consists of all of the divisions. And in this green square, I'm showing you what those divisions consist of. So the second phase of our analysis, we took the same five categories, except instead of asking for our leadership team to evaluate their particular division, we formed new teams within the larger leadership team. And then we had all of those groups present to the larger group. We did this so that we could have a kind of check and balance about the way we were thinking about things and what our conclusions would be. So this second phase was really a kind of um, an attempt to keep us honest and keep us true to what the data and research was showing you. Some of the first things that came out of our analysis was that we needed organizational temporary policies, and I'm showing you some of those temporary policies. Now, these policies are really um, living documents because, as you all know, the COVID pandemic has changed almost daily. So these policies are really being used to help us maneuver through a fairly complicated um, path. Then also, um, during the um, pandemic, we've had, of course, staffing and payroll issues that we were really ill-prepared for. Um, a couple of those are employee assistance programs that we created and formed partnerships with, for instance, Forsyth Tech Community uh, College in career training for displaced workers as well as um, organizing a mental health assistance program for our entire staff um, with McLaughlin Young Group. Part of our analysis um, really sought out the most recent um, scientific research about the transmission of the COVID virus, and this graphic is showing you if someone coughs we know about the six-foot diameter social distancing space, and that's being shown here by this yellow oval. But um, we now have research that shows that really tiny particles can stay in the air, and those can actually go out around 27 feet. So we have these two different yellow um, ovals that we have to pay attention to. Um, we also sought out information about how COVID could be transmitted just from breathing to speaking normally 
to then speaking in a loud voice. And this is important because as interpreters at Old Salem, we speak in a higher than normal voice because we're generally talking to a lot of people. And so this yellow highlight is showing you that when you're speaking in a louder voice, that those particles can, even through a mask, go around 10 feet. And so this graphic is showing you, without a mask, how much of that particle um, can come out of a person's mouth just from conversation. And the bottom image shows you, even with a mask, you still get particles penetrating the fabric masks. And so we also sought out more information about masks and what that would mean in terms of the safety of our interpreters and our visitors. So we also um, conducted a mapping exercise. And I'm showing you here the Mitch House, which is one of our historic venues, of course. These green dots are interpreters or visitors. These pink circles are the standard six-foot social distancing precautionary area. And then we're introducing those yellow ovals from our previous research and data collection. What you should start to see is that in the Mitch House, these rooms are very domestically scaled and small. So as soon as you put a few number of people in these spaces and you have interpreters starting to talk, you can start to see that it's really limited in spacing being provided for safe social distancing. And then also research is showing us that recirculated heating and air conditioning quite simply just spreads the COVID virus. So in very small spaces, such as the Mitch House, you really couldn't find any safe space to have a traditionally interpreted um, experience. Now, here's the Vogler House. So I'm showing you all four of those categories that I described before, except now they're in the Vogler House. Take particular notice that even in the hallway of Vogler, two people cannot pass each other and still maintain social distancing. Then, of course, we have the interpreted um, conversation oval, and then the light green recirculating air of the historic venue. Our third building that we mapped is the historic tavern. We suspected that because this was a bigger building, this would be something that quite possibly could give us a better experience in keeping safely away from the COVID virus. Well, in actual fact, in looking at all four of those categories, you can see that the historic tavern only has one room, and that is the kitchen in the back that would provide even the mildest form of precautionary space. The rest of the rooms and structure were just like the Mitch house. Pay attention to the porch. It is barely large enough to provide social distancing for one person down the center of the porch. And once again, the hallway is so narrow that two people couldn't pass. Then what we did is we actually compared all three of those buildings in the same scale so that you could see what it would be like having visitors in all three buildings and doing a comparative analysis. One thing that you'll see is that, for instance, even though the Vogler and Historic Tavern are larger buildings than the Mitch House, the rooms are all domestically and similarly scaled rooms, which of course produces the same environmental conditions, and that is they are not appropriate and cannot give solid precautionary space against the COVID virus. Part of our analysis also looked at larger things outside of Old Salem. For instance, North Carolina and Winston-Salem stay-at-home orders, what the North Carolina school districts were doing, what their planning in the future would be, and would their planning include field trips, and what would those field trips look like. We also were very interested in how long social distancing measures would be required. 
And then at the bottom of this Gantt chart, you'll see all of our divisions and, and understand that each division would be affected differently by each one of these issues in the Gantt chart. And so as you can tell, this produced a fairly complicated understanding of how Old Salem would have um, to react to the COVID pandemic. We also looked at conjectural schedules. The top chart is showing you a schedule showing the year long from May to May. And then the bottom chart is showing a weekly schedule. And so what we were doing is we were trying to understand how these COVID precautions would affect how we ran our everyday visitor experience. As soon as it was possible, Old Salem applied for the Paycheck Protection Plan loan, PPP. That loan itself was based on the previous year's payroll numbers, and for Old Salem and Mesda, 2019 payroll was a little over $3 million. Now that's pay plus benefits divided by month, that's around $258,000 per month. Our PPP loan, which arrived on April 21st, 2020, was 664,119. Now, the regulations as they stand, we have to spend at least 60% of that money on payroll and no more of that money than 40% on utilities, rent, and loan interest. So now here we are in July and we have almost spent all of that money. We've spent around 90% of that money on payroll and health care benefits. And mind you, we also continued paying health care benefits for employees that we unfortunately had to lay off. And this is through July 2020. We're also paying our utilities, and that's 7% of that PPP money. Not many people understand that we have 35 freestanding buildings located in the historic district, and all of them need electric, water, fire, security, and HVAC. We also have seven rented buildings from the Moravian Church and one space for our Winkler Bakery Annex. So that's 2% of the payroll protection plan money and then loan interest is at 1%. What this should tell you is that the PPP program was really based on a three-month window that organizations like Old Salem and Mesda would be closed during the pandemic. As you can tell, that money is not to sustain us even throughout 2020. What does all of this mean? What does all of this research show for Old Salem? Well, our conclusions came out as something we're calling Study South. And basically, this program is covering all of our divisions in very different ways. As soon as we closed, we started baking bread through our Winkler Bakery Annex for local food banks. To this point, we've donated around 4,000 loaves of bread. At the same time, we also transformed all of our educational demonstration gardens into actual vegetable gardens where we've been producing vegetables for local food banks. So far, we've donated around a ton of produce. We also pivoted and started producing an online educational series we called the Exploratorium. And these are very directly tied to local curriculum-based coursework that teachers were asking for. And then when the students went home and the parents became the teachers as well, the parents started asking us for very specific subject matter. So far, we've had around 90,000 views of our Exploratorium series from over 20 states. We also started something called the History Nerd Alerts, and that was a conscious effort to take our primary documents and artifacts and present them on social media for educational use. 
So far, these posts have been extraordinarily successful with approximately 380,000 views of this information. As of July, we have determined that we're starting a new program called Study South. You can get more detailed information about Study South by going on our website, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about what Study South means. What it is is that we're opening up our site to research and scholars from Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 4.30, and these appointments will not be available on weekends because we'll be closed Saturday and Sunday. Because of COVID restrictions in our very tight-sized historic venues, we have no traditionally interpreted visitation at this time, except that we do have self-guided exterior experiences, which I'll tell you about, and then also an expansion of our online and digital engagements. The first program I'd like to tell you about is Salem Presents. It is an online access presentation of scholars from Old Salem and scholars from outside the organization who are presenting mission-centric information. So far, our attendees for this program come from over 20 states. To register, you can go online. We've also started a new program called the Summer Scholars Series. It's a kind of classroom boot camp for Southern decorative arts. So far, we have students from 17 states. It began on July 5th and will run through July 30th. You can register online as well. We're very excited about a new program called Salem Pathways. It hasn't started, but you can find out more information online. Salem Pathways is a self-guided exterior tour that an individual or family can use their own smartphones and track eight characters who are related to the history of Old Salem. And you can walk through the district and learn about the history and more information about those characters. So one thing I hope this quick update allows for you is that we are most definitely open. It's just a little bit different. And the best way to find out about all of these new programs and our community engagement is go online. Again, I want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support for Old Salem. And we all look forward to seeing you in person on Main Street. Thank you.